Hey everyone, thanks for checking the channel out again. Really do appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to do with this video, it's not going to be a lesson a tutorial, uh, but I wanted to talk to you about the uh, the Spark. Let's lower that a little bit there. Uh, the Spark 40 from Positive Grid. Um, just recently got it, like a lot of us have uh, within the last couple weeks or so. I had a video prior to this, again, talking about my experience with... Um, just ordering it and the, as far as uh communication the whole thing and obviously it was kind of uh some good and some not so good you know but i you know I'm, I'm over that right now but i've been playing with this a lot and it's really just been a really awesome you know you know piece to add to my my, my gear here um and one of the questions i had was could you gig with this amp um i had post posed that question on you know a message board or two over on facebook uh, some folks who Saw my first video, um, had, had some discussions about that as well. So uh, I figured, you know what, let me, I planned on gigging with it. And long story short, I'm not going to wait till the very end to tell you about, you know, hey, is it worth gigging? Is it gig worthy? Uh, it definitely is. It depends on your situation though. So I used it over the weekend. It did fairly well. Um, I did try recording everything and I used the, uh, the Tascam um the dr40x it came out okay and i think it was more kind of not user error but just how i had this placed uh it was an outdoor patio out in kinelon new jersey and i think where i had it placed i thought i had it properly positioned um i didn't i mean you can hear the band but you can hear only certain things much clearer than others because I, of where this positioned and i also think it was because of how i had the mic set up config uh, configured i should, probably should have had them like this um, facing the PA system, but instead I had it like this, so it was concentrating on, I think, only what was in front of me, so or at least in front of this, so that was probably part of the issue, but, you know, live and learn. I'm, I'm still trying to figure all this stuff out. I am by no means a whiz when it comes to some of this technology, but I'm learning. So, um, you know, my, my thoughts were, let's just try this out. Can, can I gig with it? And uh, like I said, long story short was yes. Um, it certainly was, was usable for the gigging situation, at least mine. Um, would I do it again? Probably. I don't know if I would go right back into it. Um, you know, I went from years ago to a, a 212 combo amp that was like 70 pounds to my Blues Junior here, which is pretty heavy as well on the pedal boards. And I just got tired of it all. So really what I've been trying to do is what can I use that is minimal to take with me to the gigs, honestly. Um, you know, one or two guitars max now. As a matter of fact, I've got a, you know, a Strat that I think going forward, I'm not even gonna bring to the gigs anymore because it's pushing 30 years old. And I didn't realize that until just recently. So I'm gonna keep that in the case and just bring it out for special occasions, I think. Um, but I've got a Les Paul and I've got this, and I think those are the two that I'll probably start using more of in the future. And I wanted to bring something, you know, light that might work. And the Spark 40, certainly fit that that description and even behind me right behind me you can't see it um i have the boss katana and i've used that in a gigging situation and it worked well i had no pedals aside from just the tuner in front of it uh because that doesn't come with the tuner but i long story short i wanted to be able to whether it was on the spark or on the katana dial in whatever i needed you know as far as the patches go so i don't have to bring anything with me and that was the one thing with the spark I just had to be prepared for going into the gig. Um, if you've used the app, you know that there's just tons of stuff on the tone cloud. Great stuff too. But I didn't want to use the app when I was playing live because my concern was, and if somebody can let me know, please comment below. I'd love to know how this would shake out. Um, if using the app live, let's say, and for some reason I lost my Wi-Fi connection or my cellular connection, what would happen if I'm using something straight out of the tone cloud? Does it automatically cut off from the amp? So whatever that tone is, is it gone? And then it defaults to something else that's already preset on the one, you know, one of those four um, preset buttons as far as the hardware go. I'm just curious. So I, I went with the assumption that something bad would happen if I did that. So I just found the four tones that I needed and I um, patched them right into directly into the unit. So that way I didn't need to connect anywhere. Um, what I needed to do, and again, as far as preparing, there's some really great patches out there and some aren't so great, but the really great ones that I used and I maybe tweaked a little bit, you had to make sure you adjusted the levels because, um, 
they were so different as far as the output and the levels on some of these these patches where i'd be working on one and you can't switch it between songs that's you know it's a drawback i get it but i would i use the, the volume knob and it cleaned up okay you know like from going from a crunch to something clean to something a little bit heavier it worked okay um so i i kind of was was ready for that but i didn't want to be using something and then i switched the patch and then it just double you know the amount of output as far as volume so i just made sure i tweaked everything here first and then just kind of played with the output volume as I needed to live. We mic'd everything so I'd have to worry about it being too loud. Um, we mic'd the spark and I think over the course of the night it acted as a monitor for me as well but I think the output I didn't have it any higher than 11 o'clock. So there was, certainly was a lot more room to go but I don't know how that would you know would it get muddier if I went high I don't know I didn't try it so I'm curious if anybody's done it. Um, <clears throat> that was certainly, you know, one thing. And I, and again, I, I know when people have said that there's a lot of bottom end on this to begin with, I probably would have tweaked some of the settings a little bit more to get more of the bass on the settings and more, a little more trouble maybe just to kind of offset that. But, you know, there was, there was no train wrecks as far as using it. It was good. Um, I would probably do it again if I had to, uh, but you know, we'll see. Uh, and what I did was I, like I said, I had the Katana with me just in case I needed to, something went wrong. I had it plugged in. It was actually... If, um, you know, if, if I had it up on, a, I had the, the spark on a bar stool and then right below it on the ground was the, was the katana. So if I needed to want, you know, I would just take the cable out of one, pop it into the other and it would be ready to go, but I didn't need to. So it was pretty cool using that, um, for just, you know, its purposes. And that's actually pretty cool. I'm setting up and somebody there actually knew what the spark was because he had just gotten one for his daughter. So, um, we talked about it for a little bit. So it was kind of cool just, you know, being able to share a few stories there. But I'll share with you what I use as far as presets go. Um, you know, take a look at those. I mean, again, it was four of them for the most part. Um, the music we play is a lot of it's 80s and 90s rock and pop. So um, you, I only needed a couple of specific settings, you know, and I'll go through them real quick with you. I mean, this was the first, I guess it was, yeah, this was channel one. So... <laughs> So that was what I used for the first one. Um, and the other thing with the, with the PRS that I used, I mean, you've got the, you know, your, your bridge and your neck and you're in between, but you've got the coil tap too. So I, I really took advantage of that. If I needed something strat like, I would just use the coil tap on something clean. If I needed to clean it up. Right, so I did that. So that was the first setting I did. Um, as far as that. All right, so that was the first one. This is number two pretty similar but i think maybe it's a little more output to it. Uh, a little more reverb and maybe a little bit of delay i don't remember offhand All right pretty straightforward um this was the one the only one actually the you only used it once that night um we do a u2 song we do you know we're, um we do streets have no name so you do need that type of edge delay so i just Pre-program that in there. Right? So, a lot of delay coming out of there now, so I must have adjusted it more. But but that was, you know, I used one channel just for that. And I really dug this because it had, like, this church organ sound to it, which I thought was pretty wild, so... And then, if I remember correctly, I kind of just played around as, with, with uh, before we went into the song, I kind of just did a little bit of an intro, basically. kind of made you know it was nothing really i just made it up that's what i did just to kind of give it a little bit of an intro as if guys were getting ready to switching over a few things so i kind of just noodled around with that so that was only used it for that one song i think and then i had i went with the i had needed a clean tone but kind of an acoustic to, uh, tone as well i'm pretty sure this is one of the ones i've got 
I don't think it came stock with the app, but I think I had to go into the tone cloud, and I think I found this in there. I think it's called Acoustic Chorus, if I remember correctly. So I had it in there. I had that in there and then um, I used it for Matchbox 20 song 3 a.m. I don't have my capo so it's gonna be a, a half step different there's your capos on the first fret there and then I also used it for uh, an Eric Church song uh, called Springsteen and I wasn't planning on it but it worked out pretty well with uh, the way it cut through the other instruments so it was kind of kind of cool So I use that. Um, and then, you know, there's a bit of a solo, not there's a solo, but I kind of make one in there. So I kind of, that was my fourth, more, my God. Try that again. That was my fourth setting for the night that I used, and I didn't do anything else with anything other than the tuner. Um, I also had a Electroharmonix pitch fork plugged into my chain, but never needed it. We never ended up playing anything. So all I had was basically the, the tuner um, going into. Do I have it here? Is it anywhere here? I don't know where it goes. It's here somewhere. Um, but that was really it. So definitely, again, gig worthy for sure. I think I'd want to tweak a few things around first just to get a little more comfortable with it. Uh, again, down in the comments below, let me know how that would work with the app. If um, if you lose your connection, your Wi-Fi, your cellular, whatever it might be, and if you're using it live, does it kick off the app and then it um, goes to one of the other presets automatically? I, I don't know, so let me know. I'd, I'd love to know that. Um, and that was really it. So I, I would use it again. I mean, it was easy enough. I mean, now that I know it'll work, you know, and the one thing, uh, we, we use a sound engineer for our gigs, right? For Wrong Side of 40. And the, the, Matt is really, I think he's brutally honest at times. But when we're, you know, when, we're, when there's an issue, he's going to let us know. But when we're playing well, you can look at him and he just has this look like, yeah, you guys are, you guys are, you know, you're locked in. It's great. I think he was a little hesitant as far as using that for a live situation. Uh, but we mic'd it up. And when he heard some of those tones, um, he felt, you know what, yeah, that's got some good tone to it. So uh, we went with it, and it, we used it all night. So, you know, I, I, again, it, it's a, it's really incredible. Something that small it was that loud, um, could do that much. So, and again, I don't really have any demos on how to use the amp, or I just wanted to share with you what, what I've done and how it sounds and and uh, what works, what doesn't work. Let me know. I mean, have you tried it live? You know, what, what were your thoughts? I don't know if I'd use it in a much bigger situation than I used over the weekend. It's an outdoor restaurant, or at least we were outdoors on the patio. Um, you know, I recorded it, but I probably use or error on my end as far as where I had it situated. I mean, now the more I think about it, it was straight ahead, and I was just getting, you know, the one amp uh, from, from the lead singer and, and his guitar. So I think that was part of the issue. I should have done it differently, but, you know, it is what it is. Do it for next time. Um, and that's, that's really it. So I, mean, I figured I'd just share that with you. Give it a shot. I'm curious. I know a lot of us are still, a lot of us, when I say us, you know, the, the folks who have been waiting for the for the Spark 40, they, and they're still waiting, but, you know, uh, you know, we feel your pain if you're still waiting for it, but hopefully they've, they've gotten a little bit better with how they're doing things. It sounds like they're really starting to, to move production, you know, as far as shipping them a little bit better now. Uh, as a matter of fact, today, any minute, I hope, my bag that I ordered with it should be showing up on my doorstep, so that would be cool. Um but there's a lot going on with this amp, and I think it's really, a, you know, it's a great practice tool. And again, I'm not going to get into what it does, but, you know, being able to use the app and some of the things you can do with it, it it's been great for my rehearsing situations and, and things like that. And then being able to use it live if I needed to. So I'm glad I did it when I did it. Uh, I know it, it's serviceable. It'll work. But I think if you're going to do it, you've got to be prepared going into your gig. So if you're going to be using a lot of pedals, it's probably not meant to have all those pedals on the front end of it. But if you know you're gonna use two, three, four different tones or something along those lines, um, you could probably get away with it. And especially if you're not gonna be um, changing and hitting things mid song, whatever you might be doing. Uh, the only thing I needed to do was roll back the gain on the, uh, the volume on my, uh, my guitar a few times just to clean it up when I needed to. 
and then one, I got on clean setting anyway, so it's not going to do me any good now. But um, it worked. So keep that in mind. Let me know your thoughts if this video kind of helped you out a little bit. Again, not meant to be a tutorial or a lesson or how to do anything, but just walk you through how it handled for me, basically, and and uh, if I would do it again. So And I would. I, I certainly would, depending on the situation, where I've been playing. Um, I'd be curious to know how this would work in an acoustic setting. Uh, I've got a project in the works right now where um, it's going to be all acoustic, so maybe it's worth using that if I need to. I mean, I've got my Fishman here, which is kind of what I've been using as, you know, a mini little PA system. But, um, you know, I'd be curious to see how this would handle in, a, in an acoustic setting. And it should be just fine because it'll be at lower volumes, smaller rooms. I don't see it being a problem. So comment below. Let me know what your thoughts were. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I try to get some, you know, a couple videos out every week. Um, any requests? Let me know as far as some of the songs you want to hear. I just uh, uploaded one this morning. Um, the link is right here. It's for Candlebox, far behind. So, uh, you know, let me know. And I'll certainly try to help you out as best I can, all right? Thanks very much.